Daniel. OK. Yeah, thanks um, for the invitation. Um, I'll turn the, the time on. Uh, let me introduce a little bit. Um, over the last few years, I worked on a PhD in the uh, Institute of Urban Design in Innsbruck. This is where I'm now like a postdoc uh, a researcher. Like, uh, I have a own practice with my, uh, or small practice still, <laughs> with my partner, uh, Rasana Vazdita. Um, we both, as well, like, we are uh, associated with the Venice Art Academy, where we run over the studio. And I want a little bit overall free, like, the more my um, PhD work, like a smaller theoretic background for some design research, what I'm doing. And today I want, like, because the, the conference is a little bit about the merchants, to talk about what means a merchants in a city scale. So not as a material behavior, but let's say as a, as a cultural issue. So this is a city model of Prina, and um, I especially show not it as a boundary. I don't show the whole city, because I don't think that cities are described uh, as like full boundaries. But uh, I'm going back to a notion or like a description of Aristotle, who describes in uh, Politeia the city as something like a conglomeration or agglomeration of buildings as, as first. So he used uh, the term synoikism, which uh, syn, like synergy, like uh, drawing something together, and oikos the house. So his story is to tell like, look, you, you begin with a gathering of, of buildings, you get villages, and you get more and more buildings. And at some point, there pops up some cultural manifestation as the agora, the, the temple, the, uh, um, uh, uh, or the, 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 the public uh, institutions. So city is described as something, let's say, uh, collective or something as which gives some more value to just like a gathering of or an assembly or purely like assemble. Like today, we don't have this agora, so like just like the pure uh, like assembly spaces. So how we would address this problem or like here, the, the city in the in in age of man, or like when you have this widespread of, of city field. So this problem actually, when you dig into, is actually quite old. And surprisingly, the modernists actually did describe the city in such a way as a vast ocean of buildings. So this, the former image like, was like used by, by Ludwig Hilversheimer. Who like wrote then an, uh, like quite important book in the twenties, like or bringing up or like his uh, schema of the city, like this uh, like unlucky rendering, let's say, which was uh, quite often addressed as a critique on, on modern or, uh, urban planning. So he writes writes his book, talks about actually or already attack or uh, address the issue of the quantity of buildings. So like. If you like this title from German, like usually you would translate as metropolitan architecture, but I translate it uh, simply as large city architecture. So by this, it's also like it opens possibility of rereading it in a in a digital manner or like with a digital background, which deals uh, with quantities as such. And I think we can put forward, come forward with. So usually you would you have two ways to, to address or you criticize his city model or the modern city. One is like by saying you have a certain kind of uh, society or like uh, the, the society of the assembly line, industrialization, and it turns into the materialization on the form of city. So you have content becomes, becomes a certain form. Or you have exactly the opposite that uh, Christopher Alexander in like his uh, essay Cities Not a Tree. So he says like he's analyzing uh, societies and the connections uh, uh, between between peoples in them comes up like uh, that uh, uh, less uh, wishable desirable uh, society actually looks like a tree. So he says like hey, it's actually quite the opposite, uh, then uh, the, 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 or the deformed gets like, or, or uh, creating a certain kind of society. 
So this is like, goes like through the for architecture in the 20th century, like when you can say like architecture is actually somehow always like defined like in an equational form of like form and, and content. No? It starts with, uh, with the uh, bringing together with the domino house, like that you have the free plan and the free facade, no? like you have the, uh, the free content and, uh, and the, the form. And then, like since then, since uh, postmodernism, you try to criticize actually in this terms of uh, of this equation, and by putting it here. So one is like you try or like equalize uh, a form with, with content, and by improving the, the form, you get a different kind of content, or like the network society, or like an opposite, like uh, by by improving uh, some participation issue, whatever, and so on. So in, a, in an ironical way, you, it works with absorption. So content uh, absorbs, the, uh, the absorbs the form. You, you have the darker morphological level or the, the, the shed. So like this, all these sentimental models, like latest with the city of uh, the ca capitalist globe, comes with financial crisis. It's like, oh, I think, questionable, or we should uh, question it. And, um, so what could be a new model which is not like based on, on some equation or like how we can extend or get rid of, let's say, form and content without speaking about this. So when you now take the digital as like some very simple condition that you, you actually you, you address lists or you build up lists. So at first this list starts actually with a kind of abstraction of what you want to address there or put in this list. So there's always a, an, in model of the null or the, the zero inside as already like a positive model. It's not in subtraction, but actually in bringing back. And by these, <coughs> this model actually is quite old. Like um, <coughs> before you have the, the modernist notion of, uh, of, of zero, like by, by, by Newton and Leibniz. So before like uh, in Egypt or in Babylon, you were actually describing a square or an, uh, um, you were calculating a triangle by actually taking a square and take one side to zero. So zero is like in placeholder or in geometrical placeholder. So when you now what what this what Ludwig Hilversheimer like uh, by beginning or addressing this model, what he took the tree, city of tree, like you can actually understand so that he takes uh, the boundary conditions of plots or like as property is described in a city or in a gridded city. And by actually taking out these elements or from the grid, also uh, uh, taking out the condition of the property defined by, by ground. So by this then, um, it's also clear, so this is like the basic diagram like behind. So this is some drawings he always had to separate, it's actually four stages, but you see like, it's like a crucial difference to as you would normally or usually like uh, see uh, modernism, as you say like, hey, something placed on universal grid, actually this grid is uh, like uh, assembled by elements. So as soon as you see this, that uh, it's a question of assembly, then you can reread also those other projects or the, the, the vertical city as such. So I go down a little bit through this. So this actually this kind of schema is a little bit very difficult uh, to read. So it's a complex overlay of, of different drawings in, in one scheme. For example, the, the plan is actually three different stacked uh, cities above. So the plan, the block, is a large superstructure like from 600 meters. And then you now look like uh, just to one of his blocks. Then you, actually the perspectives like is, is enormous. You, you look here in a depth of uh, two and a half kilometers. And then like when you now look to just one block, you would perceive them as a, a usual like built uh, modernistic slab, but actually it has this size. So uh, this what you thought is like a window or like just uh, the repetition of, of windows is not a window, but when you compare it with a plan, it can just be a lodge here. So it's a, it's a, a, a signifier just of the, of the cell or the flat uh, as such. So when you, his uh, uh, drawing, like how he, as an example, plays like just one block, you get in quite a similar issue. So all the other blocks, anyhow, they vary with, uh, uh, with the amount of windows or like the amount of, uh, of openings or punches in this facade. 
And then he now what he suggests actually as a, as a plan or like how these uh, apartments would be placed inside. So you see that he's like uh, have a certain uh, amount of or exemplary like amount of uh, apartments which can be then uh, be placed between like uh, two staircases in this field. So and then of course like when you were a little bit combinatorics like play the amount of uh, uh, combinations through actually it turns out that the whole city if fast is has an uh, has inside an idea of variation or variety which completely exceeds actually the amount of, of flats and so on. So like there's a, there's a notion of, of variety already like embedded uh, modernism which en uh, enables also like a positive reading of uh, modernism as such. So how you would now like, because it's a bottom-up model, it's about assembly of cells, how you would now like address or make it possible to assemble the cells like that they with each other like interact or have a, a meaning with itself. So he famously, he says like a, a, a room is, um, is dependent on the, on the sun insulation or it should be planned according to sun insulation. So first point is important. The, the amount of sun is not, is not like as you used in grass or something, it's not like in value or like in color. It's a, it's a light prison, or he talks about light volume, so it's very much like an architectural thing. So what they are doing, like uh, he made this a student exercise over 40 years later on IIT, like they actually begin to shape this kind of light, uh, light prism and so on, internal locking with, uh, with the space. So this can today, of course, can look completely much more pause or much more in a different way. You should imagine such images. Another thing is like why he is actually taking the sun. So he talks is actually it's, uh, uh, for improving the, the health condition of a human would, who would live there. But it's just like one problem with this is um, the human uh, or like when it's a sleeping room and it's like an industrial city where you like uh, you go to work, you go to school or, you're, or like you're at home <laughs> in your free time you would be not in the bedroom actually between eight and, and one, which is like after this, after the studies, the best time for the room. So what it turns out that it's, it's a quite classical move what he's, what he's doing, like by dressing actually in, in human condition to an, uh, to an form or to an, to an geometry. So uh, human condition is an abstraction, which makes uh, or like, like in a Kantian sense, like like making, making it uh, or giving it a uh, human property in itself. So this is of course like uh, becomes an, 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 a very vitalist notion which, uh, which then opens up the, the issue like of, of participation or like of parthood uh, between this uh, cells. So this in, in my research then or why I call it Meological City or for me it was important then there's a, a whole discipline which deals with relations between two parts and, and halls. But now be careful, this is the same what set theory would do, uh, uh, would, uh, would do, like just you have, uh, you want have one hall or you have one set and you place some objects inside. This is the same what Alberti did, you have like one facade and now you like very properly, you uh, uh, place the circle, you place the doors and so on. But what we have actually as a condition since, uh, since modernism, uh, like the famous image what, what Siegfried Gideon uh, actually used as a celebration of, of uh, the new modern form, that you cannot address or you cannot see, perceive a hall anymore as a hall. So subjective experience and uh, duration over time and so on, uh, or like fragmentation, becomes a certain or like a very crucial issue uh, for, for actually designing. So how you would actually now like a design like a building when you cannot, or like a city, when you cannot address it as a, as a whole organizational form. So, and this is like actually the thing what, uh, or, ah, sorry, sorry, there's like one slide. So, or when we come back with the, with the, with the model of like uh, putting the, uh, making the, the room like to a kind of uh, a humor or vitalist notion, this is a, a very different model of, of abstraction like you usually would see like uh, typology. 
Like this is uh, this is like one of his earliest design when he began design like like building structures. So you have on the left side you have the the, the reading of the American high rise, and his kind of uh, new designing is like an abstraction of the existing. So you have like a very generic form like this place with ta uh, uh, taxonomies and like you usually would see or read like typology. But today we actually we not abstract like from a generic to a specific, but more like from a very specific condition, again like to a specific. Not like the, the, the Amazon uh, uh, robot farms, like you see like the design of a robot very much is dependent on something what is absent yet, but like is, is like there together just like actually perceivable. So the same condition like uh, this is like actually addressing like meology or where it gets uh, as, uh, as knowledge like very in interesting. That like these uh, tackles like individuals at first and then uh, again like uh, how you can actually describe or embed a whole into a part for, for part as a whole. So you have a circular condition in this kind of uh, assembly modes or in like a part of whole relationship. So the most famous example, the first example was like uh, at, uh, the first mathematician we used this, Lesnevsky, was using the example of a line. So they say like, hey, a line, you know, say you have a line that's line segments, but you try to do it otherwise. So processing very easily, it's very simply, you can do this. You, you make the line, like well, we saw it like uh, uh, two lectures before, you make the, the particle chain. And uh, then of course you give them more motion and now you, you begin to connect them. So it's the same as you would just uh, uh, connect the, the line segments, now you uh, connect the lines with the lines and so on. So this is some, uh, this is a bit low res, this is something what, what I did already, I think 2010, 11 was this research, like how you can now uh, actually fool this kind of parthood conditions between the lines come to completely different materialist models. So you see also like, uh, okay, we know this from, from Frey Otto, uh, research in minimal path systems and so on. We see as well, as soon as I change the, the quantities of this, uh, of this condition, you get completely different kind of materialist uh, behaviors. So I'm also, there's like one thing I'm using like architectural designing like more in a way uh, also like to transform like philosophical thought or like more abstract theories like materialize some or making them uh, visible. So you see like here kind of resolution we have in this like the mo model of assembly like you have a completely different possibility of scaling up today. So um, when you now when you read the, the digital line or when you come now to the uh, notion of an OBS curve, which is like an abstraction or in, uh, in, in, in function. First, of course, in the computational issue, you could now read also the line as line segments and again, like as a compositional thing. So this was uh, uh, one recent research that tries like rebuilding or begin to speak or like to continue like a, what now you would call a parametric thought in uh, compositional uh, issues. So like, you're placing a new model. So like then is where you can turn to architecture things. So this mode of assembly, like in the more teaching, which is more like uh, the research side. So one uh, researcher like to go a little bit through how you can also uh, make like a figuration more on an architectural scale. So you see as well, like you start like with a specific design of a figure you bring in a configuration, you test this configuration, so each figure has its own specific uh, attribute. And then again, when you assemble them or like bring them in a more surface condition like then in lines, then of course each specific element would again like uh, uh, lead to a very certain uh, figuration. So you see here, like through the mode of, uh, of just simply putting the things together, you have already like an inscription of the uh, whole uh, condition. So this is like also this done, this all done with processing, like uh, Excel wrote like a, a rigid body library for this. And yeah, and also like it has, it's just we made then a little uh, installation out of, uh, of the best result. So it's also like the big advantages, you, you have this, this uh, similar figure, 
So you just can easily laser cut and assemble them quick, cheap, and uh, yeah, we come to this. So which is actually like having a circular condition in this kind of uh, uh, designing process. So similar uh, project which we did uh, in, in Innsbruck, in the of urban design. So when you now know that a grid is not anymore a grid, but like an assembly and the, the, the window in itself has a possibility for reconfiguration, of course you would, would turn the building and its reconfiguration to completely something else. So back to Hilbersheimer as the last thing. So when you now have these uh, parthood conditions or this kind mm -hmm. of how one connects to another, of course this has a materialist way a completely uh, different uh, ways of, uh, of figurational issues. So here is also like is like kind of uh, bringing like the, the schema of the, the Hilversheimer city just in a theoretical sense showing it actually the, the possibilities of uh, like actually already like a modern model. So when you look now, when you look to, to urban developments in, in China and Africa, so in the next 20 years we will build uh, uh, cities for 2 billion people and actually what, what they are using is actually just the modernist model. When you see how cities get uh, gets built and planned, then it's actually everything more or less in an academic way based on, on, on a city schema like what, what Hilmersheimer did. So I think it's very crucial uh, to come to a certain point to reread these models or like give like a positive drive in the, in the uh, notion of modernism to really give it a twist into something which uh, produces much more freedom possibilities. So and this is something which again like uh, relates back to the, uh, to the Greek or the Greek city. So what the Greek actually uh, a city just, or when you remember the first image, a Greek city could just uh, exist uh, in like, in this being like all together of all the parts or like you, you were like the, the mass of houses or the economy of the houses was like also creating these possibilities. So like actually fool that they had already like in very ancient model of, of speculation which like fool, uh, uh, fool the building and its economy like uh, created this uh, all public forms. So, yeah, so at the moment I'm like trying to, uh, or I'm not trying, I'm uh, putting my research or edited in a book which will be then published in uh, April when it comes on the market. Yeah, so that's it for so far. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, like, of course, this is super compressed. Uh, so my. But maybe we have some questions. Well, not so much a question, but uh, I want to say that I really like the last uh, animations. They are really powerful. Yeah. Uh, especially, yeah, I really like like how the whole network and the whole uh, system uh, changes completely. Yeah, with, because of the interaction of the, uh, let's say, of the uh, elements in the system. Yeah, it's not a system. This is like, uh, this is the notion what I wanted to bring forward. Uh, that actually, mirology, you know, if you read it as an architect, so you have meros as a Greek word for a part, and logos, which means reason, or also like ground. So then, like, no, usually when you have, like, or you know, this all figure ground game in architecture, so you read the ground as, as this here. No? So, and I think it's the most crucial thing that we have to overcome this. So the ground is like these, what these parts or this make. So this is completely bottom up interaction. So there's just like one abstraction, what one wants. Okay, now here in these uh, things, like more or less they're, they're similar. Of course, like when now they just, yeah, begin to, to interact. So you would not really uh, see the system. But yeah, thanks. <laughs> but you certainly have some cells that <coughs> somehow interact with each other. Is that, is that 
Of course, they, of course they interact, but there's not, also like from, from coding, there's not, uh, there's not a class which like just loops over. No, like which there's not like a, a, a list which has all like or places sums of all or like new neighbor conditions. So like each one has its own addressing its its neighborhood and so on. Or this is also like this is actually uh, you see they like, direct. Wait, I let this one more like perhaps in the image. <laughs> These are actually this is completely based on the Hilbert thing. So they see they react actually on a shadow. So it's like avoiding uh, 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 self shadowing. A complete modern condition. So. Do you understand it right that this is um, a bottom-up system? This is a, they are autonomous. Yes. Okay. So they could be also they could arbitrarily have any kind of shape. It's like a similar way as a schema. Yeah. So and that's that's the thing. What what also like I'm not pushing forward. So. I have this like historical reading or began to read, so I make this now as a field research at the institute, really going through all the history and like I think it's a very crucial issue what we have or what we should use. Actually all history of architecture. I mean it's so full. When you look when you use the to code or like we to use the, the computer as a brush then then I don't know, you look different to all the descriptions. So when you, you don't want to look to open like a history book because somehow it's it's not the right way, it don't feel right how these buildings get uh, described. But somehow you always love like to enter like a Baroque or like a Gothic church. So like there's something touching you and I think you can very much use this kind of your reading or seeing this kind of architecture or all like uh, knowledge and transforming it and combining it with, uh, with digital thought. Thing which is also like very necessary at the moment to, to bring this back. Yeah. Um, I also, I would like to have a couple of comments. Um, it's incredibly impressive what you are showing um, for particular reasons. And I think that um, I put together a presentation for tomorrow, uh, my own presentation. And I wanted to make a certain point, and the point was supposed to be that we shouldn't be forgetting the architecture behind the tools that we are using. And I was somehow wanted to propose what kind of arch architecture we can actually um, tackle using uh, all the possibilities we have. And you somehow took the, the win from, from, from myself. No. Because, uh, <laughs> I don't see a need for, it, for, for actually saying that because what you are doing is purely architectural. Um, you, I, I don't even know what tools you actually use and I'm don't, I don't care. I don't want to know. Uh, doesn't matter. Yeah, no. exactly. It's actually self-written, so... Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, and, um, and I somehow see that it's somehow interesting to see the, the modernism revisited. So if what, what you're doing, and you're, you're clearly referring to somebody who is soundly based in, in modernism, and you're revisiting the, the notion, that's what, what, what I think is uh, very important, because you somehow exist and work within, within the historical context. So I don't really have any question, and it's just, just a comment, and I'm thinking now, whether I shouldn't spend this night just restating what, what, what I would like to say tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I think like um, what, well actually what the last generation, like since, since 50 or 60 years, what architects are doing in, it, in their writings, like you always like you refer to the, to, uh, the former generation, you say like, this is bad. This like, not like most, like you try always like to improve and especially like the postmodernists did this. And I mean, not not everything was bad, and like it's I think very important, even like in the in the what was at first like very negative. What you don't want to look at, there was a certain reason why it was important, and why people thought it was important. I think like this is really like in, in very much knowledge what you should have, and uh, I mean you should not forget like at the moment when everything gets filled with, with objects and we just talk or like it's like technique completely takes over. 
is at first like is a is a highly demand to to beg, uh, to bring back arts and humanities, combine them with with objects. And another thing is, like, I mean, we we know we are dealing all the time with this, and we are combining this already. You know? Like this is architecture about like you give it like a cultural manifestation or cultural form of this. So uh, we anyhow doing I think something very crucial. And then you look also when you look to philosophy at the moment, like the the the, the triple O, the object-oriented uh, uh, discussion. So you should not forget that these these are like, uh, or they make it with language, and we make it since 2,000 years, like with with the objects. So we have a very like already like a complex knowledge we build up, like in what's exactly also the the, the digital makes. So when you think of like algorithms of sortings or like stacks, like I mean, like this what you make in the first semester is like uh, not making a stack or not making actually how an algorithm would be written as from an informatic point or mathematical point. So I think like we can very much combine this or bring actually in this field by by rereading the history, like we can really address also other fields and very very crucial issues which we have at the moment. So this was a little bit the drive behind this, like don't to go in this way. I mean, I mean, I come like, I come like from, from swarming, or like the, I mean, I was always fascinated, like not making this, so it was the reason to begin with coding. And yeah, of course, like at some certain point you get frustrated with bubbles. You know, like having, having spheres and having spheres and, and yeah, so. <coughs> yeah. I think I didn't understand, I didn't, didn't understand the project, but uh, you are like admiring the, the modernist architecture, and you figure it, you are trying to figure it out what are the quality of the space in modernist architecture, and then mm -hmm. this is already dating the grid with some rules as the shadow. Yeah, I don't know, wait, wait. Uh, you should not some see this, no, no, wait. Uh, look, wait. This is not uh, about something which should get built ever. This is like a, a way how to read and to understand architectural thought. So this is one thing. So it's like a model which could work. I would not say I'm embracing modernism. I think I'm it's more like surfing or something or like hacking. I would like use these forms because it's completely clear that <coughs> Hilbersheim itself was, I mean, you, you find it, you can find it and read it in his writing, but it's of course a, a reading of, of, of our time. This is very crucial, I think, a difference. And when you see, like, you, you will never get rid of, of the modern condition. I mean, just take, take smartphones, take the laptops. These are rigid objects which are redundant, uh, uh, multiplied, or like, just get produced with millions of pieces and all similar. So, like, you're completely surrounded from, from actually these issues. And I think like it's like working or addressing this, not like complete being or like having an alternative or seeing or like making opposition, but trying to work inside of this or like bringing it a twist, try to, to yeah, open something up. Of course, like it's, it's addressing the form of a city which is as well, like, I know we usually you tr we try to avoid to speak about the form or like the city as like something what you can build even. No? And I think like it's, this is a, is a problem or I think is uh, something you should never forget by even like placing it and talking through geometrical or this form, uh, just, just think what you place on a table, you have a completely different con discussion you open or like it gets also an object for just for a political discussion, right? Just so it's like it uh, also like a discussive thought in some certain way. Um, just just one more comment. Then um, now I got back on my track, and um, I, I think I don't have to change my <laughs> my presentation um, because what you what you were saying is that. Um, that every next generation is trying to, well, you find it wrong that every next generation is trying to deny the previous generation. Mm. Um, but I'm going to do that because um, I think that 
your what you are showing and what other people are attempting to uh, say Peter Eisenman uh, is trying to do modernism right. I mean, uh, this is this is modernism done right, probably, or, or true to the the notion it mm -hmm. had. Except, I think that modernists themselves, the, those who actually were developing the uh, the movement, they actually were not so uh, close to the true nature of the, of what they were saying, because they they were so obsessed by by the formal aspects rather than those things that we're advocating for, for, for the use of them. And what, what we see here, no modernist would, would ever make a shape no. like that. No. A plan, a city plan like that. But if it very probably um, meets all the requirements they would they would call for. So, <laughs> and Peter Eisenman goes, it, it takes it from, from a different uh, viewpoint as well. Um, but it's this kind of revisiting. So, in a sense, you also kind of uh, disagree with, with the people who, like from the, with the previous generation. Uh, but unlike the postmodernists, it seems like you're not trying to, to do the opposite, but do it right. And that's what, what, what Eisenman tried as well. But what, what I will say tomorrow, but it's related mm -hmm. to what you're saying, that's why I'm saying it now. I think that um, the biggest problem that we have right now, and you said that we are. Uh, you, you were um, you were charmed by by the swarming and and, and tired with the bubbles. Uh, what I think we are doing wrong is that we are taking a lot of um, notions from the previous um, previous generations, like from the modernism, and we are trying to either apply new things to them or um, or uh, apply the, the the old notions to the new things. And there is a lot of um, inaccurate, like a lot of random thinking or a lot of wishful thinking or arbitrary thinking. So I think it is kind of important to, to know the history and to know the, the context and place of the history and whether you can or cannot use it um, using uh, fr from, from the current um, viewpoint. That's what I think is, I don't know if I, if I yeah, put it to I mean, I think as well, like uh, a, a swarm, like completely denying any surface conditions. So we always try to make it by myself, like trying to make this fabrics and like like out of like swamps. But in itself, the notion is, I mean, each or like if it's not a point, if it's like already an object or a chair and so on, it's completely obvious that uh, uh, it's completely different understanding of space and so on. So it's also that I think this we taking too much from okay, the postmodernism is just about surface. And it's also like, okay, the object already, the name, like Heidegger, like thing is, so, okay, it goes too deep now. But uh, it's of course like this, I think like by a little bit being more careful or like going also like this, what's on the table, or, like through all the, the history or like everything as knowledge with like an understanding or like an, an eye of like a, a, a digital like craftsman or something, I think then you can also draw a difference like in a, in a positive way or in a constructive way to like what would be unique or would put more <coughs> addressable. No? And use the potential fully yeah. just to improve something that is exciting. Anyone? Anything? I don't want to think it over. So. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you.